uh, but one it's one of the biggest challenges that we that the man faces today especially when you think about it that even everything a lot of things you watch uh, will have a lot of sexual innuendo a lot of even advertisements for th- uh, that have even nothing to do with women will have just you know a lot of sexual in, uh, innuendo and uh, uh, this innuendo comes in even into the office place and you, and you think about it and you're like for a lot of men you work in a, in a space where you're spending more time with uh, with the women more than more than even the time you spend with your wife because if you work 8 hours a day and maybe add another 1 hour in the morning and a 1 hour in the evening you know commuting from to and fro work it means that it's possible for you to be somebody of the opposite sex maybe between 8 to 10 hours a day and maybe by the time you come home uh, you know talk to the children get yourself down maybe you have 30 or 40 minutes max with your spouse so what you do with your spare time whether it's in business i mean not even the spare time just how you interact when you work this whether in business or you're employed has a big effect because you see if you if you if you're in an office and you you, you constantly start maybe even there are some of these things start inno- innocently you start maybe just you know sharing with someone the, your personal struggles or even just the things that are happening in your life and before you know it one you've you've gotten uh, entangled in an emotional sort of a relationship with someone in the office you know a, a lot of times this emotional relationship is very easy for them to turn into sexual uh, relationships uh then one is also just even how you interact some people a lot of jobs these days involve being out of town for long periods of time or even out of the country for long periods of time what do you do with your time after maybe let's say you've gone for a conference out of town for two weeks three weeks out of the country what do you do in the evenings? Um, you know, and you might be having a drink with somebody in the evening, and and you know it leads into something else. So just those kind of things of saying that I'm going to create for myself some form of boundaries, where you're, you're going to be, where you say, you know, if there are things that are not necessary, if if a meeting is not necessary after hours, then I don't need to interact with it. Uh, if somebody is not my spouse, I don't need to be interacting with them about personal issues, you know. And it's just those kind of boundaries that men sometimes are not able to, you know, to create. So that you, you in, in essence, you're able to protect yourself and able even to see. Most men will not even have some, you, in your mind, you have the type of woman who you think could distract you. And I'm like, most men, will not even think about it until they're already in the in trouble. And I keep on telling them, if you start thinking about it, when you're already in this situation, it's going to be too late. But I keep on telling them, sexual sin is one of the sins in the Bible they actually told run away from, you know? It says run away from sexual sin. It doesn't say pray. It doesn't say wait and pray against sexual sin, you know? Uh, I think even you saw even in, in the Bible, given the example of... Um, of Joseph wanted to sleep with him. It actually took him literally running away from her, you know, to avoid any sort of, okay, he still got into trouble later on because of false accusations. But they're the, the kind of situations that you don't want to be there, to be in even in the first, in the first place. And if you look, I mean, even in the world, a lot of uh, men have been brought down by, by you know, sexual relations. Bid CEOs of company, presidents of, com- of countries, you know, uh, big countries that are then brought down because of this sexual uh, sexual sin, uh, and, and and so it's 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 one of the primary things that I say men have to be very careful. Uh, even as we talk about financial integrity, uh, sexual purity, uh, emotional purity is also a very key and fundamental thing in the in the workplace. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Sorry. Again, you got to be proactive. You know, I was thinking of the words of yes. Job in Job chapter 31, verse 1, where he says, I made a covenant or a promise with my eyes not to look lustfully at a woman. So he, yes. he made a promise before God and himself that he was going to live a certain yes. way and that he wasn't yes. going to compromise and go 
a different way. He didn't wait until he got into that situation. He was attracted to some lady and be like, okay, I'm going to make a, co a covenant now with the Lord that I'm not going to do this. Yeah. Because if we're honest, yeah. Yeah. if we wait to that yeah. moment of temptation, we're not strong enough. We're not strong enough to, to fight it. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll fall into it. Fight it. Yeah. I, I, I know this goes, I like what you mentioned about Job. You see, it's, that's actually taking initiative because you see, one of the factors of taking initiative is clarify your convictions way before. You know, you can see the job he had actually clarified his conviction way before that my eyes are not set my, are not set my eyes on anything vile, you know. Uh, but a lot of men, we, we, we have not set this, any convictions. You, things kind of, and that's boils down to being passive. A lot of these things come and catch us, uh, you know, almost like off guard. And you're trying to make the decision when you're already at the spot. So, and that's why you find sometimes you find there's some men who are, I mean, for them it's a very easy no, but it's because they've clarified their convictions from right from what go. 